So how are we doing folks? Welcome back. Uh, and today we're going to look at a little grab bag I've put together for carrying out work solely on electric motors on a site. So if you saw my previous video on my general tool bag, that's for doing motor and panel maintenance predominantly. This one I intend just to be able to go out and look at a motor, disconnect it, test it for dead, insulation test it, continuity test, whatever I need to do in that respect. If I had to actually then remove the motor, if the motor was termed as faulty, then this kit probably wouldn't do. I'd have to start adding extra tools to it. But to be honest, for the sites that I work on, if you go out and test a motor and then decide it has to be removed, uh, that then changes the whole job and you have a new work package. Your isolation may need to be different uh, and so on. So it's very rarely done the same day. So you've got plenty of time to go out uh, and grab some extra tools. Um, I have the bag here basically loaded with the tools. The aim would be to use this with something like the MIT 420 uh, for a basic insulation tester that I keep in this Vito bag here or something like the MTR 105 if it was a more strategically important motor. So the bag itself is from Vito Pro Pack. It is the TP4 Blackout. I got this with a TPXL bag I purchased a little while back when it was on offer to buy the TPXL and you got this TP4 for free. Um, so the bag hasn't cost me anything, so I thought I'd try and put it to some sort of use. So I think what I'll do is go through the bag uh, in basic tool type, and we'll start off with the test for dead, which will be the QTEC two-pole voltage tester here. Um, this is actually the Q1700. Uh, it is obsolete now. I believe it's been replaced by the KT1780, which again, there's another two pole tester, so fairly similar to this instrument. Uh, there. To go with that, I have around the back here the Martindale uh, proving unit. This is the uh, PD440SX, so it has the voltage testing function on there and also a resistance and continuity test function for use with the insulation tester. At the moment, I've got this stored in. A little lens bag here that just clips to the little D-ring. It seems the easiest way for me at this moment in time. The other way I did have this set up was uh, with the magnet. This, this comes with the box anyway, so it's not being bought as extra. But you put this in here, and then I can hold this down with the grips there that are in there. Uh, and you can carry it around that way, it's just a little bit more exposed. Uh, the advantage, of course, is as soon as you come to testing, you can have it sat there ready for testing with your instrument. So as part of your test for dead procedure, test your instrument, go away, test your motor terminals, and then come back and test your instrument again. Um, but uh, whichever one takes your fancy, really, at the moment, I'm sticking with the uh, camera lens bag, just keeps it uh, a little bit cleaner uh, and out of the way. And so we'll pull them out of there. Uh, the other disadvantage to that, of course, is it makes these getting these grips out slightly more difficult. But that's those two there. So obviously, with motors, the main aspect is nuts and bolts. Um, so for that, we have our socket set. So our sockets have come from uh, Ten Tools. This is three eighths drive. This is the ratchet that you have there. Alongside that, I have a bunch of sockets. So I have on this little rail, the rail is a little plastic rail from Silverline. They just uh, pull off here, it's held on with a little bearing on each one there. So I have the 10 mil, 13, uh, 17 and 19 in the standard. And then deep sockets, which are actually uh, Vera, from a Vera kit, these ones, I have the 10, 13, 17, and 19 there and then in our little front pouch here I have a few more, oh, well, just one more really which is the 8mm uh, long socket from Vera and then I have the extension bar with a little bit holder also in there and then I have three allen key bits with ball ends and these are actually from Sealy uh, I have the four five and six mil, uh, which is these three there. So I have these are the four, five, and six mil. So I just had them hidden away there. So 
them up there to go with the little bit adapter. Obviously, if I uh, got something a bit more stubborn, I intend to use this that will go onto the ratchet. But I have a set of bits here from PB Swiss. Um, these are on a belt clip, so they go straight onto the tape holder there, and you can just press down and then open them up, and you can gain access to the bits. Uh, they've got the standard Phillips 1 and 2, 3, Posi 1, 2, and 3, and then a bunch of slotted, uh, which I think are 4 mils, 5.5, 6.5, and an 8mm. So that's those there. Uh, moving back around, keeping it all, oh, these two round here actually. Um, it's part of the uh, Teng socket set, you get this driver, so I can make this into a nut spinner if I want to. Um, and then the collar does actually spin, so I've got that, and you can actually put the ratchet into the head here to get a bit more leverage should you want to. Um, those there and obviously if I wanted to make it into a screwdriver bit I can use the uh, bit there uh, use the bit holder and then I've got a rather large chunky screwdriver uh, and also this does act as an extension piece as well I've got a small extension here but uh, you can gain uh, extra extension should you need it by using this with the ratchet as well uh, and to go with that uh, just to see trying how this works really I've got the little folding driver from Koken which is also 3 8 drive as well so you can use that for a bit of extra leverage or more manageable screwdriver I guess with the bit holder if you wanted to uh, it all uh, plugs together standard 3 8 so no problem and there you go so you could use that as a screwdriver with the bit set as well should you want to so that's that bit there uh, alongside sockets, uh, sometimes you need to use some spanners where you can't get these in at all, uh, or you need to double up. So uh, these are all Tang. And I have the uh, combination set, doesn't come with a 7mm, so I have from the open ended set a uh, 7-6mm spanner there, but I would only use the 7mm really for the really small motors, M4 studs you come across occasionally. So that's that there, and then I have the 8mm, and then in this pouch up here, I have uh, through 10, 13, 17, and 19. So metric, I've got the luxury of dealing predominantly with metric, so it's not much of an issue to me really. I'm not really in need of uh, imperial or uh, standard, I think they call it in, the, in America. Uh, and the final spanner. One is a 8 inch adjustable spanner. This is the slimline one. Uh, and this is a, a channel lock unit. Um, so more probably to do with um, nuts or uh, SWA glands, gland nuts, stuff like that. If they've come loose or you need to uh, shift the cable out the way a bit more, then you've got the option to undo them, uh, undo them back up again with this. And also to go along with that, I guess you've also got the water pump pliers as well, which are these ones here, uh, these are from Tang, and to go with that set there, we have our combinations, which are these small 7 inch combinations, and a set of cutters as well, which are little small 6 inch cutters, if you wanted to rip some tie wraps off, these are just general use really, uh, might be available, and they all come from uh, a plier set that I have in the big roller suitcase as well. So that's all one set, or part of a set, I should say. Um, and then we finally get on to, uh, let's do the pry bar. So again, motor terminal boxes, we want to get uh, into them. Sometimes the larger, heavy ones. I carry a small pry bar with, in my general tool bag. Um, so I've got a bigger pry bar here for this bag, but it's probably uh, a little bit too big. But the pry bars come in a set as well, so this is just the next one up in the set. So I'd have to buy another complete set or take that pry bar from uh, the general purpose kit and that there and then a little scraper as well this is from Bergen uh, this is just to uh, clean faces up on motor turner box should you need to or, or scrape something off uh, there and then finally we are into screwdrivers so just general purpose screwdrivers 
the majority of these ones here come from Tang. Again, they're from their respective uh, standard screwdriver toolkits and uh, VDE toolkits. Um, here, got three mil slotted. And there, I've got a four mil slotted. That's in the VDE. I keep this predominantly for screw terminals, which you do come across for sometimes for motor heaters. Um, these two screwdrivers here will be better for that. And then the other slotted is 6.5, uh, which is from the Tang. And then you have a Philips Zero in that slot, and a Philips Two, which again is Tang. And then the final two is a PB Swiss strike through screwdriver. Um, this is 8mm blade on this, uh, so if you need something with a bit more leverage, um, and you've got the the hex head on this as well. But again, you can put a spanner around or the adjustable spanner around. Uh, not so I decide, is that 10 mil? Uh, yeah, so it takes a standard 10 mil spanner. Uh, so I have that there as well. And that is the kit complete. Uh, so that's it there. That's all the bits uh, laid out in front of you. Oh, I said that. I, haven't, I forgot the torch, didn't I? So this is just a little low light torch, uh, 300 lumens, so fairly bright little thing. Just keep that in the bag just in case you do need to inspect something a bit more closely in a, in a darkened area. Um, so that's it then, that is the complete kit. Uh, as I said, the vast majority of it comes from the roller suitcase, Tang Tools roller suitcase that I have. Um, and uh, there's just bits and pieces of the individual kits that you can buy for that that I've taken out to actually uh, make this set up. Um, so I'll put this up on the screen now. This is all the part numbers from the various items and the costs. Uh, and you can see down at the bottom there, this comes down to a pretty hefty £808. So what I did actually do then is split this all out into individual tools so instead of buying the kits and taking the bits out and having bits of kits left over, you just buy the bits and pieces that you need. Um, but I, the first screen here is purely as much as I could to get in 10, and that comes out to 732 pounds now, so a little bit of a saving. Um, the option then was to look at the Sealy tools, which is what the little ball drivers were there for, and that then came out to 601 pounds, so yeah, £200 saving if you went down the Sealy Tools route. Sealy Tools don't make all the bits and pieces. You still have to buy something like the PB Swiss there. They don't do, really do a bit set. Um, uh, and they don't do these kind of 3 8 drivers either. So you'll either have to get uh, another manufacturer or stick with the 10 unit. Um, but you can get it cheaper. I would imagine if you shopped around a little bit more, you could get it significantly cheaper than the £600 for Sealy as well. Which I might well do. I might well uh, do it as a little exercise see what I can get from the likes of Amazon, eBay, and pull together a similar sort of kit just for electric motor maintenance, and uh, see how much that costs in comparison to this little bundle here. So let's chuck it all back together and finish the video off. Um, as long as I can remember where everything went, of course. But you might be able to, you never know. Okay, so there you have it. That's it all back together. Um, fairly neat little package. Overall, it weighs uh, around about six kilos, just over six kilos. So fairly manageable. I think that comes in at uh, somewhere around about 14 pounds. So fairly manageable to carry around with one of the meter cases there. Now that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next one.